Hello, welcome back to the DevForce 2010 Silverlight Tour for part two with me, your host, Ward Bell, VP of Technology at IdeaBlade. We're going to be focusing on CUD, Create, Update, and Delete, although in the course of that we'll be swapping out the data grid for the data form. We'll show you how to save, which is where you put all of your newly created and updated and deleted entities, get them back to the persistent store. Uh, we'll show specifically how to add a new uh, entity and to delete an existing entity. We'll explore pulling in child orders of a parent employee using the orders navigation property, doing so both asynchronously and eagerly. And then we'll add a little bit of visual logging um, to watch the entity manager, DevForce's persistence container, uh, to watch it work. Off we go. We're going to replace the uh, data grid with a data form in, in our main page. So we open up the XAML and uh, we're going to yank the data grid here. And we're, we're doing this because instead of looking at all the employees in a grid, our objective is to look at each employee individually in a form. Um, now, I don't want to jump right to the toolbox to get it. I want to switch to the design view and then go to the toolbox and find the data form to drag it on because by doing it um, in the design canvas we get a couple of nice effects. One of them is it's easy to lay out here. I'll just as before I'll reset the layout to all and it'll snap into place. The other thing is that it did it uh, it added the references for me. There's the toolkit that we showed how to download that uh, from Codeplex in in part our part one video. So we don't have to go do that. So now we're ready uh, to switch to the XAML and uh, scroll into view. And the, it tagged the namespace onto the end there. I don't like that. Um, so just for formatting purposes, I'll bring it onto its own line. Okay. And uh, so there's our toolkit. Uh, and as before, with the grid, we're going to add the uh, item source. We're going to bind it to the same employee's property on our view model meaning it's going to go get the same employees just as it did in the grid, only now the data form will get it, and the data form will show one of them at a time. So we built, and we're bringing it up, and we're waiting for it to show. And the application is actually up, uh, because we can see the navigation bar up there, but no data have arrived yet. Now the data have arrived, how do I know? Because the next button lit up. Uh, and now when I click the next button, it shows, or the previous button, it shows uh, the data in the data form. And we have an add button and a delete button, and so we're ready to go. We're going to want to save the changes we make to employees in this form. So we don't do that in the form itself. We do that in the view model like we do everything. Uh, so we're going to put it here, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to refactor our entity manager because we're going to be using that a lot. And so instead of having it be a local variable to the constructor, we're going to grab it uh, and make it a clear what it is and drag that uh, up so that we have it as a member variable of the view model where we can get at, at it conveniently. And now we're ready to add our save method. Uh, make that private first. Um, so now we can come down and we can start our save method, which uh, we do. We'll just call it save. Uh, and we're going to use that manager and we're going to call save changes async. Has to be async. This is Silverlight. All trips to the server are async. And l let's remind ourselves that we really should have some error handling here, huh? Um, okay. But enough for the view model. It's got what it needs. Now we have to go into the uh, XAML of the main page and we have to trigger that save. And when are we going to trigger it? We're going to trigger it whenever we um, have made some changes to the employee in the form and then that edit has ended, such as if we move off of um, the current uh, employee and move on to the next one. And that's the data forms edit ended event and we're going to hook that event uh, with an event handler that will show up in the code behind. We hit tab and Visual Studio puts in a uh, uh, event handler for us and puts it in the code behind. Hate being in the code behind, but there's no easy way yet uh, to bind uh, these kinds of events. So we cast the data context as the main page view model that we know that it is, and then we call the save method that we just added to the view model.
when the user clicks the add or delete buttons in the uh, data forms navigation bar we want to create a new employee or delete others now we could and maybe we even should find the event handlers on the uh, plus and minus in that navigation bar uh, but instead we are going to take advantage of the fact that the employees property to which we're bound is uh, an observable collection and raises a events of its own that can be taken care of entirely inside the view model so we don't have to touch the view at all let's go to the view model and we'll find our observable collection of employee there it is it's employees and now we will find the event of interest which is the collection changed event and we'll go uh, tab tab and we'll get uh, it'll generate a handler for us in the ugliest possible way we will clean that up use the C sharp method group syntax which looks a lot better in my view and uh, now we're inside the method and uh, we're interested in two of the ways in which the collection could change and we'll know which one we'll take a We'll have a switch statement and we'll listen to the action that's been passed in uh, to the event args. And in the case where it's uh, notify collection changed action, I have to add a using statement here to get that. Uh, when the case is that we're, we're adding, uh, we will call a, a method, an add method, and we will pass in the new items. Uh, and those will be uh, type objects, so we'll have to cast it as employee. Got to add a using to get the link cast statement to work. Okay, and uh, then we're done with that case. Now we're going to go um, create this add method. We'll generate a stub for it. And um, it, it takes an I enumerable. Uh, employees would be a better name for what's coming in. Again, there'll only be one. Now, um, you know, this is, the data form is newing up um, this employee. That's all it's doing. It's just, you call in the default constructor. But we, um, we could be wanting to have much more sophisticated creation logic, setting a whole bunch of fields and something. This would be the wrong place to put creation logic. It belongs in the model, not in the view model. Anyway, we're not doing that. Keeping it simple. So we've got our manager. We're going to add these employees to it. Uh, add them to the uh, to the manager. Uh, that's all we're going to do, and we're done with that case. So then we go to the other uh, collection change case of interest. Again, notify collection change action, and in this case, it's remove. That's what happens when we click the plus button, and we're going to create a delete method, and uh, you pass the old items into that, and we got to cast those to employee two. Again, there'll only be one, and then we're done with that case, and that's all we're going to do with our collection changed. We created the stub method here. Let's drag it in order and uh, go implement it again. Let's rename that to employees. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the employees. There'll only be one. And then we're going to take that employee and we're going to find its DevForce entity aspect. And inside that entity aspect, we'll find the DevForce delete method that will schedule that employee for delete. Just like creation, this has no business being here, these details. They should be in the model. Uh, so we'll just, uh, and we also have to remember to save. Before we were able to auto save when we moved from employee to employee because that caused the uh, uh, edit to conclude. Uh, but there's no such uh, signal that we get when we do the delete. There is no edit ended. So uh, in keeping with auto saving, we'll save whenever we delete. Now we'll explore a parent and child relationship between employees acting as sales reps and their child orders and we'll see it visually as the employee data form we've just been building below that we'll place a data grid to hold the employees orders and bridging them is the orders property the orders navigation property of the employee entity that was generated by DevForce and we'll see that property work asynchronously and lazily which means that that as we move from employee to employee each time it will go out to the database and fetch the orders and then display them in the grid in a later segment we will see how we can add an include to the query so that we eagerly fetch the orders at the same time we got all the employees and then you'll get to decide which one you like 
So let's go to our main page view and we won't edit in the XAML. Uh, we're going to go to the design view and we're going to grab the layout grid which holds our data form. And by clicking on the left here we divide that grid into two rows and then we're reaching inside and grabbing the data form and pulling it into the first row and reset layout all snaps it into the first row and then we go to the toolkit and find the data grid and drop that into the second row and let reset layout all snap it into the second row. Now we're ready to edit in XAML. And we scroll up and we get to our layout grid and we see there are two row definitions but they've got proportional heights and let's get rid of those proportional heights and let it auto size. And we're going to rename the data form to something a little bit better. Employee data form sounds good. And we'll change the data grid to employee orders grid. And now we've got to bind that grid to something. Uh, as before, it's got to be the item source, uh, but instead of binding to the view model, we're going to bind to another element here. We're going to bind to the, the data form. And the path is going to be the current item of the data form, uh, which we're promising will have an orders property on it. Now, uh, you know, Silverlight View doesn't know anything about that. All it knows is this is a data form, and the data forms have a current item. Uh, and we're just saying that that current item will be an employee and employees will have an orders property that we know is generated by DevForce. So it's all about promises. We build and the application starts to come up and the app isn't quite there yet but when we see that next button light up we know the data are here so we click that and we get Nancy, but no orders yet. They're being fetched. There they go. That's asynchronous fetching of the orders. There's a delay there. Andrew, his stuff arrives. And so it goes, because that's the way uh, asynchronous fetching works. I happen to think it's both cool and useful that in DevForce you can have an employee and go employee.orders and if the orders are already in cache, yes, of course you get them and you present them. But if the orders are not in cache, uh, DevForce recognizes that fact and this being Silverlight asynchronously goes out to the database and fetches those orders just in time. Uh, there are many, many circumstances in which that is the exactly right thing to do. And by the way, this is uh, something that uh, RIA services can't do. But sometimes uh, you maybe don't like lazy loading or you know that uh, you're going to get a very few number of employees and you know you're going to present those orders anyway and you would just like to get them all at the same time rather than making eeny, meeny, miny, mo trips to the database. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. We go back to the view model and we find our query for employees and we tack on at the end of it the entity framework include keyword and then we specify here we're doing it in a string you can do it in a strongly typed way we specify the name of the relationship and the direction and then the entity framework ultimately is going to go find the orders related to the employees we're fetching and send them over the wire at the same time but notice something uh, special here which is that we are specifying the include on the Silverlight client that's something that a DevForce query can do we build and the application starting to arrive data aren't here yet maybe they'll take a little longer than before okay we've got the next button and Nancy and her orders arrive instantaneously and so does everybody else's which is what you'd expect if you're fetching the employees and orders at the same time I won't always be able to be here standing next to you whispering in your ear and telling you what DevForce is doing. So you'll want some way to listen to what the Entity Manager is doing on your own and that's what I'm going to show you. We'll add a, another public method, another public property, an observable collection of string because there'll be string messages and we'll call it log and we'll give it a public getter but no reason to have a public setter. And we'll initialize it in our constructor. And then we're going to write a method that can uh, add messages to that log. We'll call it uh, uh, write to log and we keep that private. And uh, we're going to insert these string messages at the uh, top, at the front of the collection, because uh, we want to see the most recent ones first. So now we're going to populate that log uh, with a, a messages that are raised by events from our manager. 
and one of those will be the fetching event which is raised when um, a query goes to the database and we can find the type of query uh, from the query object and so we'll report the type and then when we come back from querying whether or not we went to the database there's a queried event which will be raised and we're going to write to the log then too we'll say that uh, we queried and uh, we're going to look at the results of that query you know the results are on i enumerable um, so actually we're going to cast it to objects so we get an i enumerable of t so that we can report the actual the count of the uh, results that we got back from the query and uh, close that up and change the label a little bit query returned some number of elements now we have to display it so um, we're going to add a new row to our grid layout and we'll just make sure that that's auto height and then we got to add a new control uh, we'll make it an items control uh, so that we can show all the messages and we're going to bind the uh, item source yes we're going to bind it to the view model um, which is already or binding to but we're going to bind it to the new property our log property um, with its collection and we'll make sure that there's room for 200 pixels worth and we'll put it in the third grid row which counting from zero is two and um, now we're ready to build and see what we what we got okay zoom in a little bit here we're waiting waiting okay it's fetching no data yet and uh, the query returned nine items and our button is lit up so now when we go click the button um, we see our uh, information our both our employees and our orders coming together that concludes part two of our DevForce Silverlight tour I hope you'll come back for part three when we extend the employee entity class with a little custom business logic and we polish the app some more. Hope to see you there.